And so I am Lisa Albin. I am a Feng Shui master trainer and co-founder of the Intrinsic School of Feng Shui, along with my partner in crime, Steve Kodad. Steve, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. She's the one that does the crime. <laughs> you know, I knew you were going to throw me under the crop. Throw me under the carpet, throw me under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I just put two sayings together. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I hope that you're finding us. I'm looking for <laughs> your comments on Facebook. See if we've got anybody that sometimes it takes a while for the notification to come up. Steve, tell everyone what we'll be talking about in today's chat. Yeah, this is a, a subject I think that a lot of people would find interesting. It's about particular myths that we have about feng shui. And there are some really strange ones out there. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to cover several things that uh, are really not true. So I want you to understand that feng shui is a, it's a very old environmental science that actually works and has an awful lot of common sense to it. So, yeah, we're going to be covering different myths right now and looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think it's really cool too because it's kind of something um, and within the International Feng Shui Guild, each of us comes together and we talk about, you know, boy, um, there's just so many misconceptions out there about Feng Shui. People think, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing something and it goes against their religion. Steve, what is the top um, myth that you hear when you're working? Well, I'm, I'm going to start with that one. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I first got certified about about 17 years ago, you know, I was used to to presenting material. And uh, so I was hired by a couple of uh, two-year colleges to give classes on feng shui. So the first night that I did this one class uh, in a, in a two-year school, uh, I had, uh, you know, a fair number of people there. And so we started into it and, and it went really well. And then the next morning, next morning all hell broke loose because I heard from the administration that they had several people call in and saying what were you doing allowing anybody to be talking about this particular religion and of yeah. course after I stopped laughing um, <laughs> you know, we, had, we had a nice little conversation about it but you know there are some people that have the misconception that it, it is a religion and so that is the number one myth that I have ran into a few times not as much now right right yeah you know i had that same that well not in a in the big level that you did in um, presenting for a university but um in starting out my careers i did small workshops right. and i mean a lot of them were even in holistic um you know metaphysical um centers some of them furniture stores um you know so it varied but it didn't matter where i went i had a few people quietly come up to me and say i don't know if i should be here I feel like this goes against my, they, they would say, I'm Catholic. I feel like this goes against my religion. And um, and yeah, so how did you respond after you were laughing? I talked to the, the president of the university at this point, and uh, he certainly was on my side. And I explained to him what it was about. And he knew, he knew a fair amount about it. So it really wasn't a real problem. But... This person they called in that was irate about it, you know, I suppose they called her, called her back, but uh, it wasn't like she was in my class or anything like that. It's just that she had heard that it was being done. And so, you know, I, ha I have ran into it a few times. Uh, I do bring in the idea that, you know, we do use our intention and all that kind of stuff. And that might be where it comes from. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, too, because is um, intention is is really it's a prayer. Um, yeah. In a way. Yeah. And, you know, and we, you know, as you know, you know, we we try to follow up a cure with uh, with intention and sort of throwing it out there and hoping that the universe or God or whoever mm -hmm. will hear our hear our plea, you might say, to help us out. and. I can't see anything offensive about that. Uh, I, I certainly do not follow uh, a religion called Feng Shui, neither do you. <laughs> but uh, I, that was probably the first thing that really shocked me about this because I feel like I'm very practical minded and yeah. very rational about these things. And I would not ever 
be trying to incorporate a religion into any type of uh, class or anything like that. That is just not me anyway. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I like that you, um, and, I, and I've learned this from you, so I use it a lot, is um, talking about the environmental science of it because um, we teach about landform school. And I think that's really the great place to always go back to, right, is that landform um, aspect of how feng shui was originated. Yeah, I mean, that landform to me really speaks to anybody about, you know, how, how you're going to place things or how you're going to sit or, you know, how you're going to put your house up. It makes an awful lot of sense. And that, that brings me to the point of number two that I have on my list here, that feng shui is really a lot of common sense. And uh, I, I believe that either one of us would not be as enthused about this if there wasn't an awful lot of common sense mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, studies that have actually backed this up so you know some people will say well it, it's just uh, it's just woo woo or whatever but it's really not it's really not i mean there is there's a little bit of some of the things that you know you maybe have to think a little harder about but it's really a lot of common sense that's been built over thousands of years yeah, it's really only as woo as you want to make it, if that makes any sense. Um, because you really can, you can take it to different levels. We do a lot of studying around um, intention, obviously, um, and reading up all the on the books of that nature. Right. And a lot of practitioners, we also do delve into the concept of law of attraction, um, a lot of the laws and principles of energy, in a sense. So, um, and it's not something that we're we're doing haphazardly. I think every feng shui practitioner is a is a deep researcher of any study that we're integrating into our, our practice. Right. Oh, totally, totally. And the, as you know, you know that's one of the things that maybe attracted to attracted you to what I did is that I try to back up things. I mean, I there's there's so much science out there, so many studies that have backed up things about why we sit in a particular location for example and why we feel a little bit better there and why we're more productive there what is what is weird about that i cannot say yeah so you know the idea of handling things where people are going to feel more uh more successful and and feel more comfortable that makes total sense for everybody you know everybody yeah. needs to have an environment that makes them feel very comfortable so taking away some of these objects taking away some of these things what what is crazy about that enough is yeah. very very Taking much common. away things um you know clearing clearing clutter is always like a top um you know association with feng shui and i think that can lead to some myths as well um but i think if if as we're talking about feng shui as a religion um now that we're here we are in 2022 um i even see out there on linkedin i hang out on linkedin quite a bit um, and there are a lot of feng shui practitioners out there, which I'm really excited to see, but it's widely accepted in business uh, culture to talk about meditation. And um, that doesn't get the, um, you know, the misunderstandings anymore because most people have read and understand that if you allow for at least 20 minutes of meditation practice a day, you're going to have an edge. Um, you're going to be more clear minded. You're going to have that success mindset um, and, and start your day off better than 90% of the other people out there. Um, and feng shui is, is really an extension of that. It, it is. I mean, I, I I am very happy if I get my clients to get five minutes of meditation every morning. Right. Five to minutes, me, that's fine. <laughs> start somewhere. Anybody yeah. can do five minutes. I mean, I, let's face it, sometimes we're out there driving and, and somebody that stopped at a light in front of us, it feels like they're meditating, you know, and I have to honk my horn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get distracted. Everyone gets distracted in their days. And it's that, that Groundhog Day syndrome. Um, and our yeah. minds are just so, you know, in, in the sense of talking about clutter, um, everyone's inundated and overstressed. And um, yeah, so it's, I, I like also that you really help to uh, reinforce the concept of feng shui as a lifestyle practice. Um, and and take it further out of that confusion with religion because it's it's a holistic practice um, it's very practical 
Um, and you're, it's a way of taking care of yourself without having to really even invest any money. That's right. You know, the, the meditation thing, I, I think even 15, 20 years ago was still, there were still some people that had some problems with that idea. Mm -hmm. You're right. When you think about all the benefits that meditation does, and it doesn't hurt anybody, it actually helps your mental state so much. Re, uh, regroups, you, your, your energy is increased, uh, you think more create, creatively, and it, it's just a, a great practice to have in the morning. You know, you and I talk about the morning routines a lot, and, and it's a, a very positive thing to do. It's, it's not something that's out there crazy. And in, in a sense, you're trying to connect with the universe or with the person that you, uh, you pray to. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and your inner, your inner knowing and listening to your inner voice right. instead of having to search all around for all the answers. It's really, um, really within. Um, and I like that about feng shui too. It's a, it's a great way to help ground and recenter oh, yeah. um, and refocus. Yeah, we, we do need that, don't we? I think there, you just turn on the news and we, we all want to sort of crawl back into a hole sometimes because of some of the crazy stuff that's going on and meditation can actually calm you down and make you feel more grounded like you said and all those kind of things and by just doing that you know you get you get through your day so much more positively and you see the world around you a little bit differently instead right. of that everything's wrong yeah, it's more beautiful. I love that aspect of feng shui too, is, is the idea of creating intentional vignettes um, of beauty that inspire and make a space feel, uh, you know, it, it really, um, you know, like you said, sparks that creativity, but it reinforces that positive mindset that you work so hard to maintain. That's um, right. And, right. and I think that's very powerful when you feel very out of control in a crazy world that you can regain some control very, um, very practically um, with a little investment, just a little bit of time and intention. And um, and once you start that and create that at home in your workplace, it really radiates to everyone around you. You know, our, our school, I think, recommends some things that are very, very healthy for you in a lot of ways. And for example, I mean, I use the term an awe, A-W-E, walk. You know, I like yeah. the term and uh, the idea of just getting out into nature and there's been so many studies that say just mm -hmm. getting out there and seeing that you're just part of the world and that you connect with nature and, and mm -hmm. just look around and it, it is such a beautiful way to bring yourself back from always thinking of yourself and being so self-centered I've, I've been doing that my whole life and it always has been a very very big help to get out of the woods and even getting lost sometimes and uh <laughs> yeah getting to know the elements of nature is like getting to know ourselves and i think that's what yeah. we learn um of the the ancient yi jing or book of changes that we use and talk about within our um, training program as well as when we get into that deeper level of training right. um, there is once you can understand the um, patterns of the seasons um, and the seasons can cause different adversities and opportunities for the elements of nature. And then you can look at that and see a correlation to what you may be experiencing in your own life. I think that's one of the number one things that I receive even doing my interior design work is that request for home harmony or harmony in life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really why it's so important when you are creating environments to do so with intention and that harmony is created when you bring in the elements of nature. Yeah, you, know, you know, it's you have to actually experience it. But uh, you know, at a, on a subconscious level, you know when you walk in somewhere, whether it's harmonious or it's in balance, you yes. know that out of whack a little bit. And uh, you know, again, that's part of what we do. You know, we try to bring our environments, our spaces, back into harmony, and it just creates a much better situation for the inhabitants and. So harmony is a really important thing that we definitely harp on a lot. Yeah, and that has nothing to do with religion. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anyone's no, religion no. to have harmony with with no, nature no, at all. In no. fact, it's probably sown within every every religion. Um, so everyone can rest assured if you're following along with us, this is not going to put you on a 
a bad standing with any religion or any other practice that you have within your household, within your communities. Um, but it's one that we hear a lot and it, it has gotten quite out of control that that rumor, um, in fact, to extreme negatives um, that I won't go into here. But um, but every practitioner comes from a heart centered place to help everybody for the greater good, um, making these small impacts within ourselves and our households does radiate out into the community mm -hmm. to everybody that every person touches. And, um, and it is something once you experience it, there's no going back. <laughs> so Steve, what are some other myths that, um, that you come across in your practice? Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, doing an awful lot of looking up some things that are sort of common things okay. that are, people are not sure about. One is that, uh, Probably you've heard this one too. That the front door should be red. And yep. <laughs> I run Although into I, that. I do love a red front door, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. Do I need to be? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and some people think, well, that that is the way it should be, and well, that's not right. true. It should it's be nice, red. But it's all not time. necessary, right? <laughs> no, no, no. There's other ways of attracting energy to the door, to the yeah. main entrance. Yeah, definitely a red door definitely attracts attention. Yes, and it's yeah. certainly something that can work in some ways and some for some houses. Yeah, but uh, yeah. it does not have to be red all the time. In a lot of cases, the uh, the front entrance is actually located in what's called the career area, and, and the dominant element is actually water. So you know, a black door or a dark blue door can work beautifully. But, uh, oh, I yeah. love those doors. Yeah, especially yeah, when it's nice and shiny and new. It actually makes me want to paint my door right now. <laughs> I love that. It's nice and fresh. And it does it does create focus and, like you said, attraction. So as feng shui practitioners, we're, we're looking to garner, attract chi or life force energy and, and people <laughs> to our doors. Because how many times do you show up to a property, Steve, and you can't find the door? Well... <laughs> Thank God it's not an awful lot, but it's <laughs> you know, symbolically it's a problem in feng shui. You know, you want to make sure that everything goes on easy. And a lot of people make life a little bit more difficult than they have to. One of them is that you want to make sure that your address is very easily to be found. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you can find the entrance easily. You want to find the pathway. So you, you want to make sure that not only are you allowing your visitors or, or your, your family to find you, but you also want to make sure that the energy and the chi gets inside. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the red door is a great idea for some people. And before we uh, leave that, you know, one of the things that we harp upon is that the color of the door and the color of the exterior should definitely be in contrast. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have a, a red brick house, you know, or, or an orange brick house, and you put a red door up there, it blends in. So you, we, we talk a lot about contrast in our you want to take that away. It's, to me, that's one place you definitely don't have a red door. You, you do it, use a different color, a, a different element at that point. But uh, yeah, we always are trying to attract energy into our houses. But at the same time, it attracts it attracts uh, human beings also. Yeah, yeah. And, and that feeling of welcoming is something that we all talk about across all schools of thought. Um, I think that's really great. I And do you have on your list, Steve, um, mm -hmm. I'll say, you know, um, you know, one out of 10 requests for me to come to a consultation start like this. I don't know how to set up my living room furniture. <laughs> um, yeah. And can you come show up and set up my living room furniture so that my house is feng shui? Do you get similar questions such as that? Oh, sure, sure, sure. You know, it, it's not all just the living room, of course. But, you know, <laughs> right. That can be the center of a lot of activity. But uh, to me, in a lot of cases nowadays, and in our world, I think I think the kitchen is more the center of activity. You know, a lot of people just like hang out in there and, and drink a lot of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I know I know you don't do that, but you know. I, um, I feel called <laughs> out by that, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So yes, I love to hang out in the center. Um, I, most people congregate in the kitchens. Um, right. Yeah, and I think. And we, we say quite often, um, you know, feng shui is more than just moving your furniture around to create a positive environment. And people are often surprised when I show up to do a consultation and they see just how in depth it is, because it's not just looking even just at the inside contents of a home. 
Right. Um, and it's not just interior design. It's not just furniture placement. Um, there's so much more that goes into um, the analysis and assessment of feng shui. You know, if they, if, if everybody out there could look at our, our elaborate checklist and see everything that we want to make sure that we check when we do an evaluation, they could see that it's really an awful lot more than where the couch goes or where the bed goes. It's, there's an awful lot to it. And, you know, both of us are, have been at this for quite a long time. And, you know, maybe don't have to use the checklist as much. But so uh, we... It's uh, several we, pages, this checklist. Several oh, pages. Yeah. Um, these these um, assessments and investigations of properties take several hours, if not days sometimes, to pull together. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter, too. I, I often get, well, my home is only 500 square feet, so it shouldn't take that long. <laughs> Sometimes a small space can take many more hours than a large space to get it to where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you have to be more creative in a lot of cases and uh, to try several different things at, one, at different times. Yeah, um, and the, the checklist uh, I think would give you a very good idea. And we, we of course, give them to our students. And and we uh, we have a checklist for businesses and all those kind of things. So. You know, there's an awful lot of ways that you can actually help people out there. It's not just with a house, it's with with uh, restaurants and coffee shops and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I love working on a store. <laughs> I'm sure you probably do too. And I just, I, I enjoy trying to uh, make people look at the right thing at the right time kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's really a lot, of, a lot of fun to be able to use your mind that way and move things around so that, you know, those things are, are obvious. Yeah, yeah. And even if there's not a lot of room to be moving things around um, necessarily, there's other things that can be done um, to make a space feel better that I think a lot of people out there are watching, um, if they're not really familiar and, and we know, we know there's a lot of books out there. We know people are reading all the books. And if you're following us on our business page, you probably have some bit of an interest in feng shui. Um, and once you try to read all of these books, you start to get really, really confused. Um, it's, yeah. it's overwhelming. There's a lot of information out there. Right, there really is. And it, that brings me into another myth here uh, that uh, in feng shui, you, we, you always consider direction. Mm -hmm. and, and in our school, we considered it in a, in, in a different way. And all the schools don't look at direction the same way, I promise you. You know, so having a compass, I, I think, is advantageous. And, right. you know, we both use that situation, but for a different way. Right. So all schools don't worry about, you know, whether the house is facing this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Because most houses don't face the most uh, positive direction for you. Mm -hmm. and so therefore, we have to be able to work around it. So mm -hmm. direction is, is a big thing that I run Yeah, into. I think that is. Um, that came up in the International Feng Shui Guild. We had a meeting last night and we were talking about the difference in the schools of thought. And I love that within the guild, everyone is very respectful of all schools of thoughts and all the right. differences. Um, but sometimes uh, that, that was brought up, showing up to a client's home and they don't understand um, that there are other schools of thought other than the ones that they might have started to study. Um, and they all work equally as well. And it, and it is based on the intention that is brought in. That's right, that's right. And I think that's one of our strengths, you know, in our school is using intention, using visualization. And, uh, and I, I mean, if you don't believe that your mind has a real strong influence on things, then, you know, I suppose then our school might not be quite a good match for you. But that's the way we think and that's the way Things have been successful for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're pretty much obsessed with our with our method that we have. Um, I feel, you know, I feel that there's a great uh, feng shui practice for everyone, um, and some a lot of people resonate with our practice. And um, once you find your what lights you up in terms of feng shui, and you gravitate towards that, um, you can have confidence and know. Um, that that's the right you know the right thing for you to do and the right the right things to right. put into place right yeah. well let, let me bring up one more yeah. i've got one more that i'd like to throw out there and i i know you've uh, definitely mentioned this a few times yourself Lisa, but 
you do not have to have a lot of objects and figurines all over your house to uh, to feng shui your house and uh, right. you know and in some cases and i'm sure you feel the same way they're just uh, not even necessary in a lot of cases they're just excess clutter <laughs> so you know i walk into some places and they have you know uh, this and that hanging there and there and they're in yeah. they're in the wrong place in the first place or they're overdone and right. in a lot of cases you don't need some of these things to really do what we're trying to do yes yeah you're right too a lot of people um they say well are you going to put um are you going to put a lot of ornaments all around my house and yeah. um you know i i do love a lot of the celestial animals um mm -hmm. and the traditional symbols and feng shui and chinese ornaments um and also the metaphysical crystals and and such but those are not necessary to create a feng shui environment it can be very subtle practical and really it's just the feeling so when a space has been feng shui at an office for example um we don't necessarily place food dogs at the door <laughs> you could have them i love right. food dogs but you don't yeah. have to have them to have a feng shui environment and it might not be appropriate for a, a corporate office or um no, certain that's that's right so stores. you don't you don't have to do these kind of things right there is, there are other ways to handle these situations. You know, don't get the impression that you have to have, like Lisa said, foo dogs that are protecting your front door. You know, there's another way, other ways to create the protection at a front door at an entrance. There's other ways to express yourself symbolically. So you do not have to have all these things hanging around. I promise you, you know, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. <laughs> To, uh, to fix up your house at feng shui walls. Right, right, right. It can be, um, and we do a whole, we do a few modules on artwork and the use yeah. of artwork. Um, and it can be very subtle and very much um, in line with whatever um, the aesthetic is of the environment. Right. Um, so yeah, it's that's a good myth. Steve, yeah, because I think a lot of people are scared that we're going to show up and make their house into a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> yeah, that's the term you've always used, and I, I do like. The, I love Chinese food, but I, I love Chinese food do too. not like the way some of them dress up their their restaurants. Ah, uh, you don't. I like it. I like I like having a different feeling um, in the restaurant, especially if I'm hanging out there for some Chinese food. But I don't. You know, we don't have to um, go that direction with any environment to make it more suitable and um, supportive of the people in the environment and um, to help people transition and grow. Um, feng Shui, we find a lot of our students too, Steve, they're not only just creating their Feng Shui careers, but a lot of them are just hoping to learn to create and support a better environment so their family can achieve goals, so they can achieve their goals. And um, we've, we've had some really great experiences within our training programs of people feng shuiing right along with the program right. and be just transforming and excelling. You know, that, that, that's a great point. I, I really wish that most people would understand you do not have to be a professional consultant. You know, you don't have to do the, the training really will take you through a lifestyle transformation in a lot of ways. It, you don't have to make this a business, you know. I, I promise you probably less than half of the folks that ever really make it a business. Some of them do and they're very successful at it. You know, we, we really pride ourselves in that. But a lot of what you're gonna get out of this is making your environments so much more peaceful, harmonious and, and motivating for you and your family. And that's really worth more than anything. I, Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, it really, I just really believe the, the lifestyle and the practice in itself helps to give you an edge and it's more relatable than what people even realize. So going over some of these myths, I think is a great way to give more exposure. Maybe some of you out there are saying I had that myth in my mind. Um, but it, I think too, Steve, like there'll probably be more myths that are coming and we can share in a, in a later conversation. Sure. Um, yeah. Were, were there any left on your list that you wanted to close out with today? Uh, well, the only other one I have here, and you know, I've ran into it a few times, is that if if you or I go out there and you say, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong, that is wrong, but they feel like, oh my goodness, I, I'm going to have to move. 
Yeah. Now, there's very few rare situations where that is going to happen. You know, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but we're talking really, really small. And in yeah. most cases, you know, what we come up with, the cures and the changes, will actually take care of the situation pretty good. There are certainly some houses out there that are really hard to work, okay? And I yeah. think a good practitioner really will let you know that. But there's very few times when you have to move, I promise. Yeah, yeah. I think people are scared we're coming over to grade them <laughs> as a <laughs> practitioner. We're not coming over to grade anybody. Um, uh, we, we see ourselves often in our clients, and we're looking for ways that we can improve your lifestyle situation. Right. It's coming from a good place. <laughs> oh, it, it always is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, wonderful. This has been so much fun as always. Sorry about my, my lawn guys are out there. Good timing. <laughs> but it's always fun talking with you, Steve. And I'm so Thank happy you. that we're doing this series. Do you want to tell everyone yeah. about our upcoming training? Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, we, we're working our, our tails off right now for the format that's going to be a two full days in Fort Myers. But, you know, you do not have to show up live, even though we would love you to because we're going to have some activities where you actually stand up and go out into the lobby and out front and, and look for things that we're asking you to look for and what you would do. But it's in Fort Myers at the Hilton uh, Garden Inn close to the airport off of exit uh, 131 on I-75. So we, want, we always try to make sure that we have places which are easy to find. I don't want you to be lost. That would be a terrible way for you to show up. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's very easy to find. I've been there already. Uh, I located myself uh, looking at several other places that had everything we were looking for. And you'll find out if you're going to spend the night that it's fairly inexpensive. You know, I, I don't want you to worry about having to take a loan out to stay a couple of nights. But uh, it's a, a great place. We're really looking forward to it. And like I said, it's a new format for us, so we're, we're excited about it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited by the people who are showing up and, and say that they want to be there live with us. It's been a big request. Um, I love our virtual training too, but people who are in our energy and train with us, they have a, somewhat of a different experience. I feel like a little bit um, yeah. closer with those that show up and um, we get to do some of those earlier exercises together on the right. grounds, always very beautiful. And um, it's so nice to be in a room with like-minded people who are invested in learning and improving themselves that continued edu education. And I think what's really cool is each class finds a connection. Um, right. They seem to, they seem, they, you know, they connect with others in the alumni group as well, but their class together has a mm -hmm. unique thing that ties them all together. Right. And um, that doesn't feel like it's an accident. So. If anyone out there is feeling called to join us, we invite you. Um, let us know in the comments if you want us to send you more information. And um, and Steve, what should we talk about next week? <laughs> well, <laughs> I called I you out I, on, on the carpet. You really on got spot. me on that one, you know. Yeah. I'm you sure know, we'll come up with something. We'll come up with something. But if you guys want to hear something from us special, that um, a burning question you may have had, yeah. um, you know what might be fun is to introduce some of our um, our alumni into um, this experience as well, or any other um, feng shui practitioners that are our friends and colleagues. Um, so, so many ideas out there. I can't wait to see um, everybody next week and to see what comes from that chat. All right, Steve, thanks for spending time with me today. Sorry about my lawn people showing up at no, the I, end. I never even heard them tell you the truth. Oh, okay, good. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, always great to see you too, young lady. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all next week, Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look for the notification. Register for the event so you don't forget. And we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye-bye, folks. Bye. Good to see you.